Well, Singapore's transport minister addressed the issue of last month's train disruptions in Parliament today, and these were the main points raised by Mr. Lui Tak Yu. He said the incidents exposed gaps in Singapore's readiness for and response to such emergencies. He said the authorities need to do better. Mr. Lui outlined measures being taken to improve crisis response. He also said the government will review the maintenance regime as well as the regulatory and penalty framework for rail operations. Straight off the bat, the transport minister said the breakdowns on the north-south line were disruptive and poorly managed. SMRT could have better handled the evacuation of passengers in the stalled trains to reduce the sense of distress and could have provided clearer and timelier information and instructions to the public instead of leaving commuters confused and apprehensive in already disordered circumstances. On 15 December, thousands of evening commuters were stranded as train services ground to a halt. One train had passengers trapped in darkness for over an hour with poor ventilation. And many did not know what was going on. Eleven stations between Bredel and Marina Bay were affected for five hours and the chaos continued as commuters tried to make their way home. Operator SMRT said the breakdowns were due to a damaged rail which supplies power to the trains. On the 17th, Singaporeans woke up to news of yet another massive breakdown on the North-South Line. That afternoon, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong ordered a public inquiry, saying he took the multiple incidents seriously. Overnight checks traced the power faults to 21 dislodged claws, which are components that secure the power rail. Plastic cable ties are used to secure the claws as a temporary measure. Excessive vibrations from the running of trains appear to be a key contributing factor and train speeds are reduced at certain stretches. Over the next few weeks, SMRT continues its checks and repairs and gradually puts the damaged trains back in service. Some have linked the breakdowns to the increase in train frequencies in recent years, but Mr Louis assured the House that the additional trips did not exceed the limits of the system. But the maintenance regime will be reviewed, as well as the regulatory and penalty frameworks, and these are also being scrutinised by the Committee of Inquiry. Measures to improve existing procedures have already begun. SMRT will now provide updates more quickly and is studying the use of mass SMS alerts. Alternative bus services will be increased and one option being explored is to have free travel on bus services that serve the affected train stations. Finally, agencies like the Land Transport Authority, the Police and Civil Defence will now be alerted more quickly. Mr Louis said the rail network is the backbone of Singapore's public transport system and its safety must be ensured. And he promised to continue working to regain commuters' trust. The Criminal Investigation Department will be the primary investigation arm for the Committee of Inquiry tasked to look into the train disruptions. Mr Louis revealed this while fielding questions from 18 MPs in an exchange that lasted more than an hour. MP Cedric Fu wanted an assurance that the Committee of Inquiry will be independent, to which the Transport Minister said yes, the Committee will have an independent investigation body in the form of the Criminal Investigation Department. Not because, you know, we, we consider that there is the criminal liability or anything like that. It's just that the CID has very, very good investigative skills. They are totally separate from, from any of the parties that are involved in the incidents. Mr. Louis said there were 21 incidents that caused a delay of more than 10 minutes up till November last year, down from 37 in 2008. But the number of incidents which caused delays of between 5 and 10 minutes went up to 271 in the first 11 months of the year. That works out to almost one incident a day. And this picture, which has come to define the recent train disruption, prompted opposition MP Yao Xin Leong to ask if an emergency ventilation panel should be built in to train windows. I hesitate to say yes because sometimes that can actually be more dangerous than it would otherwise be. Mr. Louis reiterated the need for agencies to be better prepared the next time a major incident happens. He adds that emergency preparedness exercises also need to be more realistic such that it has an element where people are caught off guard and that is something authorities need to think through. And for much more on the question and answer session, do catch the full Parliament reports right after this bulletin. 
Well, SMRT's interim CEO says his immediate priority is to restore public confidence in the rail network. In his first media interview, Mr. Tan Ek Kya said the way to do that is to, I quote, absolutely deliver a reliable system. He said the company is learning lessons from the December disruptions and improvements will be implemented as soon as they can be identified. I've just taken over. I see our people working very hard around the clock to prevent mistakes. As you are aware, a number of investigations are going on, including our own in SMRT. But we cannot wait for the reports to be finished. On a continuing basis, our people on the ground are identifying improvements and implementing them. Now, we understand that SMRT's internal investigation team, led by independent board member Ong Yi Kang, will meet tomorrow to discuss issues raised by the Transport Minister in Parliament today. And turn